the Honourable Member for Prince George, Peace River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to stand today to speak to the motion that I have introduced to this House. For the benefit of those listening at home, the motion reads as follows. That in the opinion of the House, Canada already exceeds all the standards listed in the United Nations Resolution 55255 concerning firearms. The resolution. B. The regulations envisioned in the resolution would do nothing to enhance public safety and would serve only to burden the law-abiding firearms community, and therefore the government has already surpassed its obligations with respect to the resolution and is not required to take any further steps. Some may wonder, what does the United Nations Resolution 55255 do and how does it impact on law-abiding Canadian firearms owners? The basics of this resolution is the criminalization of the traffic, trafficking of firearms, the establishment of a framework for marking firearms, and the criminalization of the altering of those markings and the registration of all firearms and all ammunition. Mr. Speaker, Canada has measures in place to protect public safety that are far superior to this. The difference is we operate with good old-fashioned Canadian common sense. Traffic, trafficking firearms is subject to a three-year mandatory prison sentence for a first offence under Section 99 of the Criminal Code. Altering the serial number of a firearm is punishable by up to five years in prison, prison per Section 108 of the Criminal Code. And we have seen how wasteful and ineffective the Long Gun Registry, which did nothing to stop crime. We have our own Canadian approach where law-abiding gun owners must adhere to a very strong set of rules and it is working. According to Statistics Canada, the firearms homicide rate in Canada is at its lowest point in nearly 50 years. And there has been a 30% decline in the rate of handgun homicides since 2008. Mr. Speaker, our Conservative government is committed to protecting Canadians. At the same time, we are committed to standing up for law-abiding hunters, farmers and sports shooters. I firmly believe that the UN has no business dictating that Canadians once again be subjected to what only can be described as a backdoor registry. Here, 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 here. Our government kept its 17-year-old record, kept its 17-year-old promise and ended the, the, la the last wasteful and ineffective long gun registry. Here, here, here. My intention in tabling this motion is to ensure that any, any door that could reopen the long gun registry remains firmly closed. As Daryl Croker, Head of Conservation Programs for Ducks Unlimited in Canada's BC Peace Region, where I'm from, wrote to me following the tabling of my motion. The Conservative government has successfully eliminated the long gun registry, saving millions of taxpayer dollars. The UN resolution would be a step backwards, imposing additional costs and documentation on taxpayers' shoulders. I couldn't agree more. That brings to me the provision in this UN resolution regarding firearms and markings. This resolution proposes that all firearms made or imported into Canada be marked with a specific code identifying Canada, the year of manufacture, the year of import, the name of the manufacturer, the serial number, as well as other details about the firearm. This goes well above and beyond the standard practice of the firearms manufacturing industry and would impose a prohibitive cost on importers. And as we all know, that cost would be passed on to our consumers seeking to legally purchase firearms. Some estimates that I have heard are as much as $200 per firearm and would possibly limit firearms of a certain brand coming into our country. Mr. Speaker, I cannot see the public safety value in adding all of these markings. Liberals have lauded this resolution when they were in government when they brought forward regulations to give it teeth. They have said that this resolution somehow improves the ability of law enforcement to trace firearms. I disagree. I've discussed this issue with frontline law enforcement and they consistently tell me that the only necessary piece of information for effective firearms tracing is the serial number. Therefore, I cannot see how any of these firearms marking regulations as drafted by the previous Liberal government are at all necessary. I would encourage the Minister of Public Safety to repeal the needless portions of those regulations and only keep the serial number. Mr. Speaker, I am hopeful that this will happen in the near future because our Conservative government has consistently taken action to stand up for law-abiding hunters, farmers and sports shooters. As I have said before, we, end, we ended the wasteful and ineffective long gun registry. We repealed the needless Liberal gun show regulations. 
and we brought forward the Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act to get rid of the paperwork around authorizations to transport, limit the arbitrary powers of the CFO, and to restore the Swiss family of firearms and the CZ-858 to their non-restricted classification. We are clearly only partly the only party who will stand up for the rights of law-abiding firearms owners. Mr. Speaker, at its core, the motion before us today is about Canadian outdoors culture. Whether it is hunting, target shooting, skeet shooting, cowboy shooting, three-gun competitions, or any other activity with firearms, these are enjoyable activities that bind us together as a proud part of our shared Canadian heritage. There are over two million Canadians who participate in these activities, myself and my family members among them. However, it seems that the NDP and the Liberals continue to believe that these activities are not Canadian. I would quote Greg Ferrant from the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, who said before the Public Safety Committee, Firearms owners in Canada are judges, lawyers, farmers, electricians, mechanics, plumbers, accountants, even federal politicians who live in and represent urban ridings. They are not criminals. They are not gang members, but rather they are lawful firearms owners who obey the law. However, it is clear that the message has not sunk in across the aisle. Some members of the Liberals and the NDP have taken debate on firearms issues as an opportunity to engage in a drive-by smear of outdoor enthusiasts by saying those who want to be able to obey clear rules are part of the American style gun lobby or are advocating for a return to, as one NDP member from Quebec said, Wild West gun laws. That is pat patently ridiculous and is offensive to the millions of law abiding Canadian gun owners. It is clear that this UN resolution and any subsequent re uh, regulations drafted to enforce it is only designed to take guns out of the hands of law abiding Canadians. That is why I encourage the government to repeal those regulations and I encourage all members of this House to send a strong message to support my motion. Thank you. Questions and comments? Question and comment tied. The Honourable Member for Malpec. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a question for the member. Two questions, really. Uh, uh, number one, uh, who signed uh, the Arms uh, Trade Treaty uh, when it was signed, uh, that makes us a part of that treaty. Uh, I believe it was the uh, Government of Canada, uh, but I'd ask the member to answer that. And, uh, you know, his, his comments, Mr. Speaker, uh, is, uh, is to try and, I guess, leave an impression with the uh, uh, legitimate uh, uh, gun owners and, uh, and hunters community uh, as if this bill is something more than it is. And I would ask him, there's probably not too many places in the, uh, in the world where more uh, guns are owned personally than in the United States. And could the member a answer uh, whether or not the United States has ratified this treaty that he's so opposed to? I believe they have. The Honourable Member for Prince George, Peace River. Yeah, I'll just speak to the thanks to the Honourable Member across the way, his question. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is my bill is speaking to have us not abide by this particular part of this treaty. And that's why I brought forward the bill. Canada doesn't need any more regulations. We don't need a backdoor registry as this would create. Not to mention the, the costs added to the firearms uh, themselves, which would be passed on to legal firearms owners in Canada. So the bottom line is, uh, my bill is saying we don't need to do this. And uh, I hope everybody across the way will support me in this. Questions and comments? Question and comment tired. Oh, no. Not a deputy de la salle est mal. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je trouve ça un petit peu, euh, toujours un petit peu euh, dommage euh, de la façon qu'on qu parle euh, en noir et blanc et que de ce côté-ci, euh, euh, il y a une certaine position et de l'autre côté, il y a une autre position. Je pense qu'il est important, le Canada est reconnu ici, ce qui nous distingue en fait des États-Unis, par un, heureusement, un faible taux de criminalité. On voudrait que ce soit encore mieux. Mais ceci est fait par le fait que, au Canada, il y a des règlements, il y a des, des, des choses qui ont été mises en place euh, pour faire en sorte, justement, qu'il y ait une protection 
euh, contre les armes à feu. Je dois avoir un permis pour conduire une voiture. Euh, je dois avoir un permis, euh, mon collègue le mentionnait, euh, pour avoir un chien, un chat ou quoi que ce soit. Alors, je ne comprends pas cette obsession qu'ont les conservateurs de ne pas faire en sorte que le Canada continue à avoir un dossier euh, euh, qui soit exemplaire en ce qui a trait à la protection, à la sécurité des citoyens et fasse en sorte qu'il y ait un contrôle adéquat euh, des armes à feu et pourquoi pas ne, ne pas justement avoir euh, ce, cette, cette réglementation-là qui est proposée par les Nations unies. Moi, je ne vois pas du tout de... et, et je ne comprends pas euh, l'obsession, peut-être qu'il pourrait m'expliquer un peu cette obsession-là, de ne pas vouloir <rire> avoir un contrôle adéquat alors que la plupart des, des, des gens qui sont dans possession d'armes sont totalement d'accord que ce soit mis en place et qu'il y ait cette réglementation-là. Bon. Member for Prince George, Peace River. I appreciate the other member across the way's uh, statement, but I don't know if she heard what I said in, in my bill. Uh, the fact is, we already think in Canada that we do have sufficient regulations, not just sufficient, but exemplary standards and regulations uh, to govern firearms ownership in Canada. Uh, that we don't need further moves uh, to accept the UN uh, arms treaty um, proposal. So I think, you know, she said it for us that uh, we already do have exemplary rules and, and why should we follow another set of rules? And why should we recreate another gun registry in Canada? And, and I think uh, Canadians are behind us. They were behind us in getting rid of the original registry. And I'm sure those same folks don't want to see another registry come in through the back door.